clearly established that the cat has a uh, great interest in the box that came with the TurboGrafx-16 Mini ship-wise. Let's see if she wants to help unbox it for real now. Hey, Kiki, come on. Okay, she's gonna help out here. Uh, we're gonna look at the box here. It weighs a good two plus pounds. You could literally just use this as a workout uh, device and gain some muscles while you're gaming. It is very, very heavy and can trust, uh, speaking wise, comparatively, the NES, SNES, and Mega Drive Minis are so lightweight. They feel like they're 3D pronounced and you can blow them away in, the, in a light gust of wind. But we're gonna try to open this up and uh, first of all, we'll look at the back of the box here. See what kind of games we have here, shenanigan wise. We have a great uh, pinball game called Alien Crush. We have Blazing Lasers, a shmup. Dungeon Explorer, which is a great dungeon crawler game. Uh, for those of you who like sports games, we have a few on here, like Power Golf. Uh, we have Irem's Amazing R-Type, still one of my favorite shmups of all time. We have a game called Victory Run, which is quite a bit like OutRun and Red Racer, etc. We have uh, two CD games on here, Wise Book 1 and 2, and Lords of Thunder. Plus, we even have... Uh, Rhino of Blood. But let's open this up and see uh, if we can actually uh, see what's inside the box here. Okay, gonna open a tab here. I'm gonna do this one-handed the entire time here. Hopefully I can do this. And we'll plug it in and take it for a test drive. But yes, it is quite heavy as a system. Uh, let me uh, adjust this. I'm gonna put my arm around the box and pull it out of here. Might need my cat to help me on this. This is crazy, okay? We got this. You should have held the box while I pull this, Keeks. Come on now. Uh, now I have this other little uh, mess to go through. And this, I mean, when I wanted the system back in the day, it uh, was meant to compete with the NES, but then the Mega Drive came out in 89 and uh, pretty much usurped it immediately, especially with the strong catalog of uh, games like John Madden and, of course, uh, Golden Axe, all them games that were great arcade to home ports. I'm going to have to, like, hold this for a second because it's going to be hard to get it out of here. I'll pause the video for a second. Not so easy to do with just uh, one hand, but this actually looks like the real system. I almost feel like it's near the actual size, but it's pretty spot on. It even has the little hoop card slot right here, which is amazing. This is sweet as hell. And this right here, you would pull off the back of it so you can actually get to the ports and such. And I'm trying to remember how to do this because uh, squeeze it right off. There we go. That is awesome. We have the HDMI port right there. So this should be pretty easy to hook up. Now we need to get a controller. Uh, where are the controllers hiding at here? We got a controller right here. This should be easy enough. Try to do this one-handed. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go hook this upstairs to the TV and we'll try it out. Lo and behold, the main user interface of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. I'm thoroughly impressed. This is awesome. There's so much uh, great on-screen action going on here with the little animations and such. And what better way to start things off than with Newtopia, great Zelda-style game, enter uh, the Who card. And my first experience with this game way back was when I worked at Video Game Exchange. Somebody brought in a whole box load of Who cards and TurboGrafx CD games, along with the combination TurboGrafx-16, TurboGrafx CD called the Turbo Duo, which unfortunately was a critical flop in the United States. I mean, uh, comparatively speaking, both Sega Master System and TurboGrafx-16 had roughly 66% more games in other countries than they did in the United States. They just did not do too well in the United States. I think part of this was the fact that Nintendo kind of withhold stock from places that carried merchandise from Sega or um, TurboGrafx-16. I mean, they would basically say, uh, hey, we're not going to give you 100 copies of Mario 2 or Mario 3 if you hold these systems in stock. We'll give you 10 copies. And of course, these stores really, really want to have their Black Fridays and such. Uh, as far as getting uh, people in there to buy Mario 2, Mario 3, and so on. So it was just a uh, conspiracy thing going on there. And it didn't really work out in the end because uh, uh, some uh, tactics uh, were basically known by course and such later on. And they did kind of a class action suit uh, against Nintendo where they had to actually give refunds of the exorbitant price systems back to everybody. I mean, anybody who bought the system, they were basically able to get like... Uh, 10 to $20 back because Nintendo was keeping the price higher because they were strong arm in the competition. It was ridiculous. And even in the in the foray of the uh, system here, uh, when they were trying to get into the United States, they were trying to get a foothold in a few various ways. They approached uh, a few different companies. Like, they approached Nintendo because... Uh, Nintendo approached Atari initially because they want to have somebody make their system, somebody who was established, uh, who had the Atari 2600. And uh, Atari said, no, no, we have our Atari 7800 coming out, and that's where that came to be right there. 
And of course, we all know about the Atari 7800. It did not do too well. It pretty much filled right up. Uh, miserably against the Nintendo, and of course the TurboGrafx-16 was meant to be a competitor of the Nintendo system, and that didn't work out because the Mega Drive came out with a strong lineup of games such as Golden Axe, and of course the uh, unbeatable John Madden football, that really just took the icing off the cake right from the get-go there. We got some bombs here. And then it took like nearly an entire uh, six months plus for Nintendo to even have a chance of Super Nintendo to go up against there. And by then they had like Sonic the Hedgehog out and it was just pretty much a strong arm competition from the get-go all the way there. But uh, so many interesting things with video game history. And this is so much like a Zelda game it is ridiculous. We're going to try to get to the, uh, the uh, boss stage here. It would be nice to have some health potions and elixirs and such to make the the little fray into this uh, dungeon land a little bit easier. And I love games like uh, Metopia 1 and 2 here. Like I said, I had the Turbo Duo, and I had the great Godzilla CD-ROM, I had Lords of Thunder, uh, Rondo Blood, these are all untouchable, unbeatable games. And this game right here, along with Metopia 2, were absolutely amazing. And the interesting thing here is that Metopia 2, the development cycle was kind of roughly around the same time as uh, Zelda 3 on Super Nintendo, so there were some parallels, and if you played Natopia 1 on TurboGrafx-16, then you play like uh, Natopia 2, it's almost like a whole new ball game. It feels much more like a Super Nintendo game than this one right here, which is more like a Nintendo game. And like I said, this was meant to be a direct competitor to the Nintendo Entertainment System. And from the get-go, if you actually compare these systems side by side, the biggest difference I could say from the get-go is the palette is just... There are far more colors in the palette of both Sega Master System and, of course, the... Uh, uh, so we're 16, and right here is actually a bomb entry point, but I remember not really being anything useful behind her, so I'm going to save my bombs. And I'm hopefully I can get some cherries, uh, so I can take on the boss, but at least I have some gold pieces to help me out here. We want to get to the dungeon as quick as possible here. Great, great music, definitely get my attention here. All this arrow tells me where to go. And if you like all the games that are like Zelda, another awesome, awesome one is Golden Axe Warrior on Sega Master System, and then of course we have 3D Dot Game Heroes, which is on, of course, the PS3. That was an awesome game by From. It was made by From Software, and uh, we all know what other game they made, which is incredibly difficult. We got this. These bats are right out of other Zelda and uh, Mega Man style games. Oh, we have little slimes, which are right out of uh, games like Dragon Quest, aka Dragon Warrior. And it, there was a point when Dragon Quest was actually given away for free with Nintendo Power subscriptions. That would have been pretty damn cool, actually. I actually didn't play Dragon uh, Quest until many, many years later because I wasn't really a huge RPG fan. I was more into action RPGs. Games like Zelda more or less got my attention more than like Final Fantasy at the time. But I did finally get into all the Final Fantasies, Fantasy Stars, and so on. Oh no, we don't want to lose all our health already. We got an life that we can use though. I kind of wish I didn't have to use it already though. We want to try to get to a boss as soon as possible here. Hopefully not lose any more health. But there are cherries we can get. There's a chest. What's in that chest? Let's see. Okay. We got some eggplant wizard style enemies going on here. Remember the eggplant wizards and uh, Kid Icarus? They are so basically frustrated and annoying. When you're in uh, stages, you have to navigate to a hospital after you got hit by them because you were cursed as an eggman with no ability to attack. And probably one of the other games that really annoyed me like that was actually... Uh, Capcom's Great Willow when you uh, were cursed and turned into a pig. That was so frustrating as well. Both of those uh, games where you have curses and you can't really attack as a result are crazy. At least in uh, Ghosts and Goblins and such, uh, you can actually uh, turn back into a human after you have a little bit of a uh, wait period. That's a Ghosts and Goblins. It's actually Ghosts and Goblins and Ghosts and Ghosts, but still funny nonetheless. Okay, come on now. Let's get to the boss here. Hopefully we can take the boss out. Or at least get to the boss. I'm going to try to do this and hopefully get a few cherries, because cherries will restore my health. And if I die, I'm going to be starting at the way, way beginning of the game, which is not like the normal Zelda games where you start to begin in a dungeon. Uh, but I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, Natopia 2 works out a little bit differently. But we at least want to try to get to the boss here. Okay, and we have some intimidated enemies here, but the bark might be worse than their bite. Because they're big, but they don't seem to be too powerful. Just take them out in a couple of hits here. We got this. It looks like... Uh, there we go. We got a block we can move, but I need to take out the enemies first. No, no, no. No, we don't want to defeat the enemies over the water and not be able to pick up any drops. You know how that goes. Let's see what's in this chest. 
to be able to attain the key to the curve. Yes, I need to get to the boss, probably. Okay. We need to get more health here. Red Warrior needs help badly. What else do we have here? So we want left and we want right. Now we're going to go up. And we're going to try to shmup after this. We definitely got to do one of the amazing CD shmups. I'm so ecstatic that they actually put some of the CD-ROM games on there. Including Rondo Blood. I mean, that right there... Up the ante. I personally think the PlayStation Classic would have done much better if they would have had Symphony of Night in the lineup. I mean, that was just uh, blasphemy not to have Symphony of Night in the lineup, which is one of the three best games on PlayStation 1, including Final Fantasy 7 and, of course, Metal Gear Solid. If you're talking about some of the other best games ever, I mean, you take those three and throw Ocarina of Time on it, and you got the four best games right there. Oh, I like this little uh, free thing here. That's nice. Make it nice and easy to take these enemies out. Okay, then we're going to go right and then up. We have obtained the bronze armor. That's nice. Now we uh, will actually take less hits by the enemies because we're stronger now. I don't remember the original Zelda having armor in it, so that's kind of a nice up there. A little variance. And we have little snakes there. Remember these in Zelda. Oh, uh, more bombs. We definitely want to have as many bombs as possible for the boss battle. I'm hoping we can take out this boss battle and then move on to a shmup here. So I don't beat the boss, we're not going to take it and try it again. We're just going to try to get beat the boss on this first attempt here. Hopefully I can do it though. Blah blah blah. Who are you? Could you be so kind as to unleash me from these wretched chains? I used to take care of I don't trust this guy. I'm kind of feeling he's going to come off of the chains and attack me. Like in some games. But not like in Castlevania 3 where you could actually uh, fight the bosses and then you could use them as playable characters. Bam! There we go. And I keep walking away like I'm gonna have like a uh, concussive damage here. Oh no, we got scarabs which are like right out of the Mama movie, which I just watched with Tom Cruise. It didn't have the best reviews, but it was still entertaining. I like those kind of movies. Even like uh, the Anne Rice translated movies like Interview the Vampire, and of course uh, uh, Queen of the Damned, that was a fun movie too. Queen of the Damned and uh, that Mummy movie are kind of similar in parallel in nature. But we have the scarab beetles here. And we should be there in the boss here, after this room. Give me some cherries here, like in Mario 2. And yes, when we had the cherries in Mario 2, I used to be able to get like free lives like crazy in that game. I almost have 99 lives by the time I get to the game. I'm gonna have to do a video into that. Come on, give me cherries! Oh no, we're on the boss and we don't have any additional health, do we? Nope! Well, let's hope we can do this. We're gonna take on uh, Spiral the Dragon here. No! Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. That was a waste of a bomb. Please let me take this boss out. Oh, that sucks. What a waste of a bomb. That sucks. I'm gonna have to. Oh, that sucks. I lost on the boss, but at least you got the C. Now, let's see how I'm gonna exit the game here. Uh, we hold, uh, I could have saved it right there, but I'm not gonna cheat. We're gonna go back to return the menu. I could have saved the point right there. Oh, let's see what other games we have, but yes, I failed on that one. Uh, Ninja Spirit is an absolutely amazing game. Uh, let's see what else we have to play here. Let's do one of the CD-ROM games while we're at it. Lords of Thunder for the win. It's doing, uh, we need the Super System card, which uh, pretty much was emulated by the Turbo Duo. And we're doing a CD-ROM game here. And if you play this on uh, the actual Mini Classics, you need at least a System Card 3 BIOS in order to run these. But here, the bios are already included, which is nice. This has an incredible soundtrack. Great me metal soundtrack here. We'll do the first stage. And this is a very, very difficult game. Hopefully, I'll at least be able to beat the first boss in this game. And like games like uh, Forgotten Worlds, you can actually go to shops and buy stuff. Uh, how much money? We have 300 credits here. What can we buy? We can buy Extra Life. Uh, we can buy... What else can we buy? A life to Restore Life. Summon an elemental. Bombs. I'll do some bombs and we'll do some health. That should be good to start there. You can actually get money uh, as you go through the stages, traverse the stages to do extra stuff there. And I use my uh, power up right away because I pushed the wrong button there. But listen to this incredible soundtrack here. It's one of those games that takes a minute to learn a lifetime to master. This is incredible. Hopefully I can get to the first boss at least. And all these gems I'm picking up will actually beat currency as I beat the stage so I can uh, buy power-ups to help me with the next stage. And I love these type of games. Rinse and repeat where you can basically earn money to make the stages easier as you progress to the game. 
That would have been a great point to use that. There we go. Oh, this music is so incredible. And Game of Thunder is another awesome game to boot. And you can see my extra health is actually the red meter up there. I have the blue meter and then the red meter. We're going to try to at least get to the first boss, though. We're going to try a couple more awesome games, but so far, uh, win-win situation. Utopia 1 alone is worth the entire purchase, in my opinion. But if you're on the fence, like I said, only worry about buying this system if you've had nostalgic value, whether or not you want to mod it. Uh, the system might invariably go down in price because some of the other minis, especially like the Rush job of the PlayStation Classic, kind of hurt the mini classics being released as a whole. It would have been nice if they would have waited a little bit longer, fixed a few things, and had uh, Symphony of Night in the lineup. That would have been so awesome. Oh, great, 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 great. Oh! No, we don't want to lose already. No, we don't want to lose already. Because my game's over once my health is gone. That's how this game works. You have one life! There we go. Health, health. I needed that. Then we got some wizard in the background there. Screw me over. Some slimes coming up from the ceiling here. No! Wow, it's getting crazy here, guys and gals. All kinds of crazy uh, on-screen shenanigans, and unlike Nintendo, there's zero slowdown. This is so awesome, no slowdown whatsoever. I'm low on health, though. My game's almost over, guys and gals. But we'll be able to try some more games if I lose here. And uh, this is amazing. Oh, I remember. Oh, health. There we go. Please make it to this crazy section there. Give me more health. I'm thinking I'm nearing the boss, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat the boss. Doing a kind of a Strider style uh, plasma sword attack on me there. Oh no, we lost our life there, but awesome, awesome game. We can hold down select and start, and we can actually go back to the re uh, main menu here. So far, two games for the win. These are awesome games. Oh, what else do we have here? Let's see if we have any other CD games to play. Oh, look, we got Natopia 2. We'll try it for a second here. Like I said, it came out roughly around the same development cycle as Zelda 3. And you see a tremendous difference from the get-go. This actually feels like a Super Nintendo game, even though it was on Nintendo. Look at it. It already feels like Super Nintendo. Look at that amazing animation from the get-go there. 1992. And like I said, uh, this and Zelda 3 were roughly around the same time. Uh, we'll just do KM here. That's good enough. KM. We'll end the game. And we're starting out on a little boss battle here. And we're on low health. Am I going to be able to take this boss out at all? Nope. Lost from the get-go there. And in the first game, I was only able to move left, right, up, and down. Hopefully, if I remember correctly, I think I have eight directional movement here. Because it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty annoying when you play a game and you're unable to move in eight directions. I remember Legends vs. Celtics on Mega Drive being one of my absolute favorite games. Even though the compete is you cannot move diagonally, you can only move up, down, left, and right. But still, the game was so incredibly awesome. And I've ruined two two TVs with burning imagery on those alone. I'm definitely going to be coming back to Natopia 1, though, because I want to be able to beat that boss for you guys and gals. I, Spyro took me out. Okay, let's get the show on the road and try getting the... Uh, KM, this was not just a dream. Your father is trying to communicate. You are strong and brave like your father. Go search for him, for he is waiting. With your father's help. Okay, I think they said the word father quite a few, two times. Take this magic compass, okay? Wow. It's almost like a the winter is coming thing here, where they're going to keep saying the word father, 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 over and over again. Just like even when I was in English class in school, it was pretty much inappropriate to keep saying the same word over and over again. Okay, I'm going to go to Urias Shrine to the East. You may find something in your father's. And by the way, uh, thanks again for all you guys and gals for recommending stuff to watch on Hulu, Netflix, and so on. I can actually recommend something myself. I noticed that they put it on Hulu. The anime called Elfin Lied is so awesome. Definitely check that out. It's a very, very violent uh, anime. Okay, hello. I'm still around from the first game. Yes. What a great sequel. Of course. Do I get bombs? Yes, I got boom bombs. It feels like deja vu here. But yes, Elf and Light is awesome. Check it out. It's almost like an anime born identity with insanity to boot. Okay. See if I can see if we can move diagonally. This is the biggest difference right here. I love being able to move diagonally. You want to be able to move in all eight directions, even though you're on a D-pad. That is awesome. So this is Lakers vs. Celtics. I mean, Utopia 1 and Lakers vs. Celtics were two games that were just troublesome because you cannot move diagonally enough, but still very, very fun to play. 
Receive the password. Yes, why not? That should be good enough. And we're going to try to go to the right. I'm not sure if I remember how to get to a dungeon because I haven't played this game in probably over a year. But uh, I'd highly, highly recommend playing Utopia 1 and 2 whether or not you're on this TurboGrafx Mini or on your Mini Classic. It is well worth it. And you can even buy Utopia games uh, digitally on some systems. I mean, I've actually purchased it before on the Wii. Holding up really well. Oh, look at that. The <laughs> little monster, the creature from the Black Lagoon. This uh, eight directional movement is so much cooler. You can even uh, do sword swipes in eight directions. Oh! Trouble with the triffids there. Yeah, this is a well done game, without a doubt. And that looks like I'm gonna be going through here to there, I think, if I remember correctly. Yep. Holding up really well. I'm trying to think of what game I want to showcase next. That cave has been blocked by a flow of lava. In Tomo Labyrinth, the chalice of agony is hidden. Only it can stop the lava. So does that mean I can act? Nope, I cannot go to the right there. So I'm kind of at a standoff there. So I can actually save the game right here. I'll save it right to there. Yes, I have the game saved. And then I can return uh, to the menu. And let's see what other games we have to play here. We got three winner games here so far, and there are quite a few more awesome games to play. Uh, Kadesh is an awesome, awesome side scrolling gauntlet style game. Never ever gets old. Wise Book 1 and 2 is awesome. Oh, look, Splatterhouse. I love Splatterhouse. And the odd thing is, it's a violent game, but it has green blood in it. Even the Japan version has green blood. Even if you play the arcade version, it has green blood. In order to get red blood in this game, you gotta actually play uh, the reboot of it on PS3 and Xbox 360. Look at it, green blood! I want my red blood. There has to be a heck with green, uh, red blood. I love all my Splatterhouse games, though. And this music is awesome. Love this type of game. Got four winner games here. I mean, we can, the list goes on. There's so many more awesome games. And look, we got a little bit of red blood in the background there, and found with that's green. Whoa! And uh, I have to say, I'd highly recommend playing Splatterhouse 2 and 3 on Mega Drive. They're both phenomenally awesome games. This is a pretty spot-on rendition of the arcade version. You might not realize it at first, but many of these arcade ports to the TurboGrafx 16 are so invariably close to the arcade counterparts. Love this. Okay, and we're gonna try a few more games. We can at least try to get to the first boss. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up losing on the boss, though. It's one of those matters where sometimes you wanna just butt mash and hopefully get to the boss. So far, so good, though. But digging this game completely. It's such an awesome, awesome game. Oh no, we don't want to... Them head monsters there, we usually would screw me on health. The flying heads, no! That's where I get screwed every time. I always get screwed on them flying heads, every time. Okay. I don't have much health there, but let's see. This would be a great game to have a custom soundtrack on, for sure. I usually try to stay in a corner and try to just take out the enemies quick, but I have a feeling I'm going to end up losing here. Give me tricky! Hey. And there's a turbo, uh, turbo run button on the original system. I can actually do it here. Yes, I can do it here. Give me the boss here, come on! So far I'm in a good place, I should be able to at least get through here. Just stay in one spot here. There we go, that wasn't too bad, but I think, oh no! Okay, hey, we made the stage too, just by going to the right and crouching. You know you can actually be like uh, Sub-Zero in one of the Mortal Kombat games, crouch, and you can literally just take out uh, sweeps on the one enemy in the arcade version, it's crazy. This game's playing awesome, we can actually save this game too. Uh, save game, this is awesome. Save game. Port 1, yes. The saves are working awesome here. Okay, we're gonna go back to the menu here. Uh, we got a few more games to play, but yes, I'm so ecstatic and I'm gonna be playing the hell out of this system. Space here is awesome, Psychosis, Ninja Spirit, Military Madness, and uh, Military Madness is, by the way, one of the games I got in the box many, many years ago, and I played it for two seconds and put it away because it's a turn-based strategy game, and I'm like, I'm not really impressed with this. R-Type! Hell yeah! R-Type for the win. One of my first... Uh, favorite shmups of all time on the, uh, you know, second generation systems. Here we go. 
Oh yeah, and unlike the Sega Master System version, which I uh, loved and I was ecstatic about getting that in Space Area, and Fantasy Zone on Christmas morning one year, there is zero flickering and no slowdown on TurboGrafx-16, I mean, and the palette is so phenomenal, I mean, you know I love the Sega Master System version, this one here is so spot on to the arcade version, and we just see the particle effects the, that just really take this game to full fruition. It's just absolutely mind-blowing, especially when you get the laser. You'll see what I mean in a moment here, if I can pick it up. Whoa, that was close. No slowdown for the win here. Hopefully I can at least get to the first boss here. And if I could pick one single game to play on here, I mean, even though Rondo Blood is awesome, this is the game that I probably consider my favorite shmup of all time, without a doubt. It's also a very, very tough game. And the interesting thing here is, um, if you play the USA version of, uh, our type, it actually has all eight levels, but if you play the Japan version of it, you actually have them in two separate discs where you do stages one through four and stages five through eight. And we're going to look at them great particle effects. So you can actually play the Japan version and do the second half of the game without having to get to it. It is awesome. So a nice little bit of uh, a loophole there. And this weapon here definitely takes the cake. This is what I consider my spread gun of Contra fame for this game. It just makes everything so much easier. And then we got another great weapon here. Look at that particle effect. Awesome. And then we get some missiles while we're at it. We should be nearing the boss anytime. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we don't get taken out here. I want to be able to take the boss out here. Oh, uh, screw you and your homing missiles here. Come on now. We don't need you. Oh, yeah. We're nearing the boss here. We should be able to take this boss out pretty fast and easy. We're fully powered up, as far as I'm concerned. Just remember the first time you saw this, it's like seeing a dragon in Mega Man 2. Just absolutely mind-blown. Seeing enemies taking up the entire screen. We got this. This should be nice and fast and easy. Yeah! Literally just three blasts to take that boss out. Fully powered up. But like I said, if I were lost a life, it would have been much, much more difficult. And the second stage is awesome. I always love the second stage. We'll do it for a brief second, then we'll see if we have any more games to play. Oh yeah, I'm so powered up. I really hope I don't lose a life here. That was like when you play games like Contra and Crisis. Uh, whereas uh, you get later in the game, the uh, stages actually become more alien in nature. This really feels like a Contra stage. Like you could get Bill into a ship and just... Begin a Contra stage, shaking on the last aliens. But of course, we're gonna move on to some more games here. We got a few more minutes to try a few more games, but we can save this game too. Uh, save. And our type for the win here. Save. Port 1. And then we're gonna actually back to the main menu and see what other games we have to play. But so thoroughly impressed. Like I said, if you're worried about buying the system, you might wanna give it a chance. It might drop 20, 30, 40 bucks. You never know. It's quite expensive at $100. And, uh, Blaze and Lasers is another amazing spot. We'll try it for a moment here. We're going to do some quick plays of a few of the other games. And this is actually an arcade game called Gunned. G-U-N-H-E-D for those of you who are uninitiated. Okay. And Hudson Soft is such an incredible company. They're behind the TurboGrafx-16. And they're actually the pioneers. They created Bomberman. I always love this music here. This music style is so awesome. So every game I've played so far is awesome. And I like the drums here, the percussion sounds like it's the type of percussion in some soft games like Fester's Quest, uh, Gremlins 2, Batman, Blaster Master, and so on. I love that type of percussion. But great, great game. I mean, just a quick pick me up play here. You can actually push the select button to choose your speed. At the top left there, uh, where it has four little arrows there, I can actually go zero, one, two, three. And that's how fast I move on the screen. That is awesome, a nice little uh, niche thing. Like I said, you got all types of genres. You got platformers, shmups, pinball games, racing games, sports games. It covers about everything you can imagine. And if you're talking CD-based games, I mean, just simply having Lords of Thunder, Rondo Blood, and Wise Book 1 and 2, them alone make it worthwhile. And I'm um, just holding the button down. This is awesome. Really, really digging this game here. And there are so many great shmups. I mean, there are like probably 50 great shmups on the TurboGrafx 16 and CD, respectively. Okay, really, really digging this out. Let's see what else we have on the list here. Uh, return the menu here. 
There's gotta be some other standout game here that I'd like to show you. Oh, uh, Alien Crush, a pinball game. There's our uh, Lords of Thunder. We got Bomberman. I mean, you can't go wrong with Bomberman. Soldier Blade is a shmup. New Adventure Island, we all know about that. And the interesting thing about Adventure Island is that the first Adventure Island on uh, both systems was actually uh, Adventure Island, but then they moved on to Monster World. Uh, Monster World 1 was actually Adventure Island. Uh, Air Zonk, that's actually a CD game too. Uh, Kadash, Bosch Revenge. I guess we'll do Wise Book 1 and 2 here because that is another fantastic game with a great CD soundtrack. This might be the final game here. And I noticed they're using the 2.0 BIOS on there. Typically I use the 3.0 BIOS when I'm playing on the Mini. So it's kind of interesting that they chose to use the 2.0 BIOS for some given reason or another here. So I'm going to have to do a, a little bit of a comparison between the uh, uh, BIOS 1 and 2. And they did do a re-release of this game, kind of a rehash remake of it on PSP, which is also awesome. And you can also get PS4 version of this as well. Falcom also made some of the Dragon Slayer games. They are awesome, awesome company. So, uh, Wise Book 1 and 2 here. We're going to try it out for a moment. Hear this amazing soundtrack. Begin it. And always love the music to this game. And I like the combat in this game. I mean, there's a game on Nintendo which is a little bit like this. Uh, Mechanic-wise, where you actually run into the enemies and attack them, called Highlight, but it's just not done well. This game does it so much better. And back in the day, when I used to play games, I'd always see people named Adol, you know, A Day, A D O L, and I didn't know why. Now I realize it's because of the Y series. Music is so awesome. I mean, I love games where you can level up. I mean, we have our experience uh, gained 50 experience there. So we're gonna get to this talk talky section real quick here. Too bad we can't fast forward through here. So what I'm actually going to do is pause it until I get to the action scenario. Okay, it wasn't too bad. I only had to talk to like a Ru uh, Kurt Russell uh, straight out of like Escape from L.A. style character. Here's my store, please come in. What are we going to do in the store here? We want to get to some action. Sarah's shop, something terrible is going to happen in this country. You're the only one who can save us. However, you'll need the proper weapons for your battles. Please purchase a sword, a shield, and armor from the weapon shop. When you return, I will tell you what I would like you to do. Okay, we need to buy the sword and such. Go to the right here. Uh, I think there should be an icon that tells me uh, which one's actually the weapon store up here. Ah, uh, it should be around here somewhere. Oh, uh, I'm not worried about that right now. We just want some weapons and such. There's a church, obviously. Give me a weapon. There we go, we got armor weapon there. Now we're gonna buy a sword. We have 1,000 gold. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be able to buy anything too extravagant, so we'll buy the short sword to start with. Okay. Okay, 500 gold. And then we're going to go out and see what else we can buy. Shield. Buy armor. 400 gold. Looks like I'm not going to have enough money to buy the other thing here. Try this one more time. So I'm going to have to take on some enemies before I can buy the other thing. Shield. I need 700, so i got to go actually farm some enemies in order to get 600 more to buy the 700 shield. So let's try going to uh, the outset of here. Take on some enemies. I think I have to go up, if I remember correctly. Up should be the way out of town here. And I, one thing that perplexes me in some games, I like to be able to get right into the frame of action like in Zelda. In some games, they make you talk to everybody in the town before you get into the action like Willow for Nintendo, for instance. But look, oh, this is awesome. And again, you're not going to actually push in the tag button. You just walk into the enemies. Watch this. Bam, bam, bam. This music is awesome. I'm loving this music. But yes, I'm going to farm enemies here. You don't want to go too crazy here. You want to pay very close attention to your health because if you get close, you might want to go back to town and uh, heal at the church or such. This is so awesome. I mean, think when this game came out, we were still playing Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, and this is just absolutely mind blowing as far as the soundtrack is concerned. So awesome. Now let's uh, go back and see where my Rondo Blood is here. Wise Book 1 2, quite an impressive game. But one thing I noticed uh, and realized is I didn't have Rondo Blood in my lineup, but I went through her a couple times. But we're going to go down to settings, uh, sort. Oh, look, we get to select the console type. Uh, that was cool. That was pretty flashy. 
now we have all of the Kung Fu, aka China Warrior. your very, very cool game. I uh, love this game. It's like a Bruce Lee style character. Look, he looks like a Dragon Ball Z character there, but when you're in a game, it looks like he's Bruce Lee. Right there, Bruce Lee style. Very, very cool. This is actually one of the games that blew my mind. Feels like playing like a Tiger handheld electronic game. I love to be able to play some of the Tiger handheld electronic games. Like Mega Man 2, and of course, Castlevania 2 and so on, on a mini classic. That would be so awesome. I've emulated some of these on PC though, but being able to play these on a mini classic would be amazing. But like China Warrior, aka, uh, this game is so awesome. Okay, so far so good. And there are quite a few games like this, even on, uh, you know, Last Battle on Mega Drive, aka Fist of the North Star is also quite a bit like this. Very, very cool game. I'd highly recommend playing this. Bam! Fail. <laughs> Let's at least get to the first boss real quick and we'll try a couple more quick games. Pretty cool. This is almost like a Zen type experience. If you ever played the Shadow of the Beast uh, reboot on PS4, it actually uses the same type of mechanics as this. An auto run style game. We got this. Oh, there we go. We got more health there. We should be able to take out the first boss easily enough. This is a tough game to beat. <laughs> There we go, we need that. There we go, that helps. We should be clearing out uh, the boss very soon here. We're gonna look at the other lineup on the core graphics as well. Oh, that sucks. Should've uh, uh, punched those rocks when they came through. Boss battle mode activate! I feel it. We're taking off a G.I. Joe character here. No one has had the battle all the way. Oh no, we're gonna lose. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm getting screwed here. Come on, we got this. A little bit of finesse. One more! Yeah! We got it. Now we're gonna exit to another game. <laughs> Return the menu here. Uh, let's see what other games we have in the lineup here, because uh, some of the games are different than the USA uh, release. Okay, let's see what else we have here. We have uh, Jaseke, Necromonster, not in English, tough to play. Galaga 88, fantastic game, even with auto scrolling levels. Uh, we have Fantasy Zone, Dragon Spirit, Epere, Gateball, Nectars, which is just military madness, Dungeon Explorer, Nootopia, PC Genjin, which is Bonk's Adventure, Wise Book 1 and 2 again, Super Darius, which is a CD based game, awesome, awesome sauce there. Uh, we have the Genji and Heki Clans, a great side scrolling ninja samurai style game, Superstar Soldier, Daimaka Mara, which is Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, Legend of Valkyrie, fantastic game like Pocky and Rocky. Aldai is another great shop. Spriggan is a great side scroll and uh, mech game, awesome stuff there. Natopia 2, Gradius, Salamander, which is just Life Force. Uh, we have Super Momotaro, then Tetsu 2, which I'm not really familiar with. I think it's like a, a, a board game style game. We have a great uh, rendition of Ninja Gaiden with a better color palette. Star Proteo, great game there. Uh, like Twin B and such. Spring and Mark 2. Snatcher, which is not in English, but it's a great Hideo Kojima production game. We have Gradius 2, a uh, CD based game. Uh, Cho and Nikki, another CD based game. And here we have Akuma 2, Dracula X, Chi, O Rondo, aka Dracula Rondo of Blood. Uh, I'll try it for a brief moment here. Uh, and of course, we're doing a CD ROM 2 Super System card. And here's the game that many people. Uh, pretty much know it's the only game on Triple Graphic CD, but there are clearly so many other uh, games out there to play. And this game should have come out in 93 in the United States like it did over there. It would have really invariably helped the lifespan of the Triple Graphic CD system. Loving every single part of this. And some people have actually gone out of the way to have this translated with English and such, but I'm fine with the original Japan version. And some of the uh, conversions with the translation and such are directly from, of course, the PSP version, uh, you know, Dracula X Chronicles, which is absolutely awesome. It can, completely comes with the original Rondo Blood, the reboot of it, as well as unlock, unlockable Symphony of the Night, complete with some Sega Saturn levels, and uh, the playable characters such as Richter and Maria. It's so awesome. But love this. This is so awesome here. And you're going to see the incredible music and presentation here. I mean, it's just absolutely mind-blowing. And when we had the NES Classic a while back and there was not enough space to play on there, I actually ripped the music out of this game just so I could fit it on there. And without the music and this game being compressed, it takes up roughly 8 megabytes of space. 
So there's like almost 290 megabytes of space for the music alone in this game. It is crazy. So we should be getting to the game here in a moment here. Loving the presentation. The visuals are just absolutely mind-blowing here. This, I mean, if you would have had this as a staple game on the Turbo Graphic CD when it came out, this just would have made many, many more people get into it. Because Castlevania was a thing. Okay, let's get into some action here. And I remember the first time I ever played this game, it just absolutely blew my mind, and it's like playing it again for the first time here. And if you ever tried buying a used copy of this, even on eBay like a decade ago, the cost of the TurboGrafx CD system, right? You know, TurboGrafx Mini right here, is probably cheaper than buying a game on a real disc back in the day. Rondo Blood for the win. Press the run button. And one of the most annoying things when we played this on the Mini Classics was the fact that you uh, would use select and start to do the uh, retro menu, but on the real hardware, select and start would actually do reset. Uh, so you actually inevitably restart your game on a mini classic by pushing select and start to go to the retro menu. But we were able to work it in me and BS Leno, Galo Fix Incorporated, with the help of other people work on the core, so that we could actually disable that. It's so awesome. And listen to this amazing music. And even on the PSP version, there's a little bit of a boss. Uh, uh, rush battle thing. Oh, this is so awesome. Loving this music here. And I love the Castlevania anime as well. We're getting right into the fray of the action here. Oh, yeah. Like I said, this, too many, this is the only game on Trevor Graphic City, but the Snatcher game is awesome too. Even if you uh, take a little time and research the strategy guide and how to play it, the language translation is still an absolutely a beast of a game. Even with the language barrier. But yes, here it is, guys and gals. The game that pretty much makes this whole system worth it right here. Even though many other games I played today, such as Utopia, uh, R-Type, and so on, just really up the ante as well. And they did recently release this on, of course, a uh, little compilation of Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood on the next gen, such as, I believe, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch as well, which is awesome. And it's occasionally on sale for only $9. Not bad at all. Right now it's $20, but you can get it $9 on sale uh, if you keep checking periodically. And look at this great parallax scrolling. You can see literally four layers of scroll in there. That is awesome. And this is, uh, even though some people might think the Super Nintendo Dracolash game is similar to this, it is a completely different game, even though it seems like it's the same game. I actually like playing this. The open board version and the Super Nintendo version, they were all different games. And, uh, and ironically enough, even though this game on TurboGrafx CD is very, very expensive, the Super Nintendo version of Dracula X is probably even more expensive than the TurboGrafx CD version of this. We're going to take out the Grim Reaper here. Oh, this digital speech is awesome. Oh, no, we got this. Oh, look at this awesome particle effects there. This really shows the uh, amazing capacity of the system. Okay, now we're going to get into the uh, normal uh, action sequences. And like I said, there's actually some unlockables in the game. You can unlock Maria, who throws the doves. And my first uh, true experience playing with her is actually in Harmony of the Despair on PS3 and Xbox 360. Because when I played this game originally on the TurboGrafx CD, I never unlocked Maria. I just played the game and beat the entire game with uh, Richter. I believe this is Richter I'm playing as. <laughs> Listen to this awesome music. We got her axes. This is awesome. You can literally just get into this game because you push the up and the attack button, just like in most of the other Castlevania games. Oh, look, we're in Castlevania 2 right now. And remember the messages where you, uh, the night turns to day and so on, and you take like 10 minutes to get to those messages, yet you go into a little, uh, uh, clue that you need, like, the, uh, stoop with the red jewel, and you click it once, and you can't talk to the person again. So you end up needing to use Nintendo Power or the Nintendo Hotline to get past that. We're gonna try to get to the boss battle here if we can do it. This music is just so awesome, I can't get enough of this. Now, I always, I always love playing the, uh, uh, Sharp X68000 version of this, too. That runs great on the core, which hopefully we'll be able to run on the Mini Classics in the near future. We're going to try to have some actions here so I can take the boss out here. Let's see if we have some nifty uh, animated flames here. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Not bad. This is like 1993. This is just mind-blowing for the time. 
really, really stood out ahead of the game. We'll use some action to take this boss out here. This should be easy with the axes. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I was actually intimidated by playing the non-linear Castlevania games for a while. I actually played Castlevania Symphony of Night for the first time in 2009 when I grabbed it on the PlayStation Network for my PS3. Up to that point, I've really avoided it and just literally just played Castlevania 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the most part all those years. And a little bit of the Game Boy ones, but since then, I went through all the other non-linear ones and it just blew my mind. And then when I got to Harmony of Despair on PS3, I just played the hell out of that, and it was such a fun, fun game to play for a while. I very, very much look forward to another Castlevania game, and I'm very, very happy with Bloodstained. I'm gonna probably have to do a video with both the prequel, you know, the, uh, the prequel that you were able to get before the actual game came out, and then, of course, uh, some of the other ones. Oh, yeah, let's take this boss out. I think we can do this. We got this. Fit it into this. Oh, that was a waste. That was a complete waste of an axe there. Come on, axes for the win. We don't want to use our axes. Oh, great. I'm going to get screwed there. No! My health is low. I'm screwed. I'm so screwed right now. Not enough health to make it through this boss battle. I knew it. Am I going to be able to start right there, though? Come on. I want to be able to take this boss out before the end of the video. Okay. Let's try to take this boss out one more time. I need more, <laughs> more hearts there. Hoping I have better luck with the boss this time. I want to be able to beat this boss at the end of the video. Let's not waste the axe there. And watch out for them fire. Let's watch out for the fire this time. There we go. Avoided that. Can I avoid the fire? Yes, I can. Whoa. Let's try not to be too close there. It's all about boss patterns here, but I'm kind of running out of axes here, so I'm getting screwed. I'm going to have to take him with my whip here very soon. Oh, jeez. At least he's almost done, though. He's actually quite an easy boss. I just wasn't following the strategy too well there. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals, and there'll be more to come.